in mid 2006, I think mid 2006, he and his he and his wife moved down to Los Angeles to start a competing Los Angeles congregation, which is now their central hub. And of course, his group, he's got 7,000 followers now. Um, they have less than 100 churches. I'm not exactly sure how many they have. Maybe I think they may be in their high 80s or low 90s by now. And again, most of these churches are relatively small. Um, probably most of them are 50 people or less. There aren't, I don't think there are any over 200 members. Um, and again, the only major difference between the current HIPS International Christian Churches and the current International Church of Christ is the level of discipling you receive. In the ICC, you are discipled strictly by someone else, and it goes all the way up to Kit McKean. And that was where the ICOC was back in the day. Current ICOC, you have that, but it's not, it's either not as clear or it's not as enforced. So there is a little bit more leeway depending on your age and life situation, but still you're ultimately controlled by the church. The saddest thing is the ICSC had an opportunity to change in 2003, but it couldn't. And there's significant reasons why they could not change. Because fundamentally, they are just straight out of the band of the gospel. Um, and again, it's one of those evolutionary types of things where if you were, let's say you're back in the 1950s and you became a member of a Church of Christ that did the Sinai and did all the legalism and baptismal cognizance and stuff like that. Could someone become a true Christian in that environment and stay in the Church of Christ? Maybe it would be difficult depending on how much they want to push that legalism. But I believe the point where complete severance with the gospel occurred was in 1986 when Kit McKean invented a doctrine out of whole cloth called disciples baptism. So basically, in order to become a Christian, you have to repent every sin. You have to submit to, and this is something Chuck Lucas kind of added to the gospel back in Crossroads, the Crossroads days. In order for you to become part of this church, you have to submit to a disciple and shepherding system. Mm -hmm. Kim McKean in Boston, in order to become part of this church, you have to become part of the art discipling system. So Kim McKean basically laid out saying, hey, you have to repent, you have to believe that you have to become part of a discipling system the way we do it as part of salvation. And not only for your baptism to be valid, you had to believe your sins are being forgiven at the point of baptism. You actually had to, quote unquote, become a disciple first. Go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. What does the scriptures really say? What do the scriptures really say when they say you baptize and teach them? Who is the them? In the original Greek, and it shows more in the KJV and the KJV family translations, you baptize and teach the nations. Kim McKean twisted the logic and the words to pretty much say, hey, you baptize and teach disciples. Mm. So let's get this straight from their perspective. You mm. do a Bible study with them, and let's say you are lost and damned and going to hell. You are not a disciple. You are not a Christian. And then you go through the rest of their studies. You submit to the rest of their stuff, their legalism. And then you have a kind of a trial period where you decide, yes, I want to become a disciple of Christian. And you start doing Bible studies. You start confessing your sins to a disciple your partner. You have one of those assigned to you. And again, this is kind of relative depending on what happens. But they're basically saying, yes, you have to start living the life as a Christian before mm -hmm. you get saved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you can get saved. Then you're good enough to get saved. <laughs> yeah. Barely saved. Yeah. You disagree with them, and then your salvation is very, very, very tentative. They can rip it away. You can restore it, yeah, but it's also very tentative. Right. Because we did not read anything about justification in the Book of Romans, right? Yeah, we wouldn't want to read any of that convoluted stuff. 